he rebels against Moshe. It's really incredible that he would be in, in this generation that saw Hashem speaking to Moshe, that Korach could come and say that Moshe is not right and that he made up the whole thing for himself. The, it's an incredible story. And the people come with great chutzpah and they, they're saying Moshe is wrong, he made up the whole Torah on his own, and we don't have to listen to him. And as we know, the story goes that the, the ground, the, the earth, somehow a, a creation, that it opened its mouth and it swallowed all the people. And we see in the Pesukim that Moshe is mispali, dance to Hashem, and he says to Hashem that if these people who are rebelling against me will die a natural death, then that will show that I'm wrong. But if a miracle will happen and the earth is somehow going to open up its mouth and swallow them, then we'll know that I was right. And the Sam Soifa asks a question over here. He says, what would have been so terrible? Why did Moshe have to call upon Hashem to make such a miracle that we know that the Mishnah tells us in Avos that this creation of the earth, the earth's mouth, had to be put in place from the original six days of creation, from Erev Shabbos Ben Hashemoshes, Hashem created this mouth of the earth. What would have been so terrible had the people all gone to sleep that night and the next morning? All the people who rebelled against Moshe would not wake up. Wouldn't that prove that Moshe was correct? And yet Moshe doesn't think so. So Sam Seifer explains that there was something very fundamental going on here. It wasn't just a question of Moshe's cover. This was a question of, is the Torah correct or is the Torah not correct? Is, did Hashem give Moshe the Torah or not? And when the people came, and when, whatever the result will be, whatever the resolution is going to be, it's going to have to prove that Moshe is correct. So had the people gone to sleep that night and not woken up the next morning, says the Chassam Seifer, people would have said, really, the rebels were correct. And Moshe was not really sent by Hashem. How do you explain the fact that these people died? Because they acted disrespectful to the leader of Kali Yisrael. They were disrespectful to a Talmud Chacham. And because they were disrespectful, they died. But it doesn't prove that Moshe's right. And so Moshe said that, no, Hashem, in order to prove I'm right, we need something extraordinary, something miraculous, something totally unseen before, that the earth should literally open up its mouth and swallow these people, and that will prove that I'm correct. And this is a tremendous lesson for us because at times, you know, it happens that that uh, we have an incident, whether it's in yeshiva or shul or somewhere, and we feel like we were right and the other party was wrong. And the lesson over here is that even if you're right, you have to act in a certain way and you have to respect the leaders and you have to respect people. And if you act in a disrespectful manner, even if you started out right, but by being disrespectful and acting this way, you could change from being right to being wrong. That's one lesson that we could take over here. Another very, when, when Kerach begins his argument, so he says, Ki It's not only Moshe who's uh, Kadosh, it's not only Moshe who has Kedusha, all of Kal Yisrael has Kedusha. And Rashi brings a Medrash, and the Medrash says that what Moshe, what Kerach did was he brought a, a pair of tzitzis that was made completely of tchelis, all of blue wool. And he said to, to Moshe, what's the din with this uh, pair of tzitzis? Is it kosher or is it not kosher? And Moshe said, it's not good. It needs to have white and it has blue. So Kerach said, one second, if a, a pair of tzitzis that only had the regular blue strings, the one blue string is kosher, then certainly a pair of tzitzis that is completely blue would be kosher. And therefore he said, he used that as proof that Moshe was uh, making this up on his own. And really, if uh, Kairach is saying that Moshe made this whole thing up, 
then in that case, he's attributing to Moshe tremendous capabilities and power that he took Bali's role out on his own. So then, how could he be also saying at the same time that Moshe would make up something so foolish that is so easily um, uh, refuted over here? How could he think that this goes together? And really, it was because he was enticed by his desire for power and his desire for honor, for covet. That's what pulled him in on this way. And clearly, it's obvious that it doesn't make sense. You need to have a contrast between your trellis and your lovin, between your blue wool and your white wool, in order that it should be noticeable that there's something here. And that would be the reminder that would help us know that we're supposed to remember something. But what is the whole union of Trelis anyway? In the union of Trelis, tremendous lesson that Moshe Feinstein uh, tells us comes from the Trelis. Because the, the tzitzis are supposed to remind us of all the mitzvahs of Hashem. How do they remind us of the mitzvahs? So the Gemara tells us in Chulim that the Trelis is blue, it's blue wool, and blue the blue wool looks similar to the blue of the sea, and the blue of the sea looks similar to the sky, and the sky, the blue of the sky is similar to Evan Asapir, the sapphire stone, and we know that the Kisei Akava had on it something, Kemaisa Luvnas Asapir, that looks like sapphire, and therefore, when you look at your tzitzis, you remember Hashem. So let's review this. What we're supposed to do is look at our tzitzis. When we see the tzitzis, we remember, we see blue wool. The blue wool reminds us of ocean. Ocean reminds us of sky. Sky reminds us of sapphire. Sapphire reminds us of Kisei HaKavit. And since we thought of the Kisei HaKavit, now we thought of Hashem, so we remember we have to do mitzvahs. Ask Ramesha why this whole big, long string of things. Why didn't Hashem say, make a color that looks like the Kisei HaKavit, and you'll immediately remember Hashem. Says Ramosha, there's a tremendous lesson over here in the blue of the trellis. And the lesson that we're supposed to learn is that when it comes to Avedis Hashem, when it comes to spiritual growth, when it comes to doing the things we need to do, it's not possible for a person to jump from where he is all the way to the top. Rather, a person has to work in a, in a fashion where he takes steps, step by step, you could succeed. And you can't, you need to go through every single one of the stages. You need to follow the pattern and begin with one thing, and then from there it'll lead you on to another step higher and to another step higher until you could reach till the Kisak of it. So the lesson is, is dual. Number one, that you cannot jump to the top on your own, but rather you must follow the pattern of going step by step. But number two, the lesson is that if you do go step by step, ultimately you can reach all the way to the Kisei HaKavai. There's nothing holding you back. You can do it. You can grow and you could climb and you could become great when you follow a pattern of going step by step. However, what was important was that over here, Kairach was trying not to take his own growth. He wasn't going to Shem Shemayim. He wasn't going for the sake of real growth. What he really wanted was himself, not Hashem. What he really wanted was Kavay, not Kavay Shemayim, not the Kavay of Hashem, but Kavay for himself. And since he came with a desire of Kavay for himself, it became obvious there was a disrespect over here and the way they acted, they acted in this way, it, it showed already there was something flawed in the entire process. And that's why, ultimately, Hashem did make the nace, the earth did open up its mouth and destroy the people, thereby proving once and for all that Moshe did not make it up on its own. It came from Hashem. It's what Hashem wants. Hashem wants us to follow and to listen because it is His Torah, what He wants us to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.